one day, I mean, weeks ago, I was having a breakfast with my dear father when my mom suddenly enters the room and shouts, Hatem, you're here? And I was like, well, yeah, basically I live here. And she goes, she, and she continues, says, no, I had a dream you traveled to the moon. And I was crying and I, and I tried to stop you and I was asking you, why are you going there? You will be alone. There is nothing there. But you were so determined to the idea that the only thing I could do for you is to fix you a couple of sandwiches to take them with you. I mean, I mean, typical moms. So I'm going to the moon and all what she thought about to fix me a couple of sandwiches. Well, but you know, this is a dream. I really like it. I mean, because it's actually, this is what happened in reality. I started this idea, which is going to the moon, and I mean, not literally going there, but to, to design for the moon, on the moon. And I was so determined to the idea that I, even though I was alone, and there was a lot of rejections, and it was a lot of hard work, but I didn't stop, and that didn't stop me. Well, it all goes back to 2009. I was watching the news with my, with my dad again, and there was a breaking news. It said, NASA has found frozen water on the moon. And they are going to reestablish the, the program of moon habitation. So from the moon, they can reach Mars and other planets. And I remember my father then turning to me and asked, Engineer Hatem, how do you think, how do you think buildings are going to be on the moon? And you know, this question kept me awake all night, thinking, imagining, and sketching. And asking my sketching pencil, is it really possible? I was so addicted to, that, to this idea at that time, it was like a dark sweet chocolate to my imagination. I couldn't stop it. And then after that, I knew it was a weird, I mean, strange idea to propose. And I, I was sure about, like, if anyone I tell him about the idea, he will, come, I mean, he will make a jokes out of me. And the first time I went to my supervisor, the first time I went to my supervisor, he gave me this weird look and said, the moon, by the way, this is supposed to be my supervisor. He, he gave me this weird look and said, the moon, are you serious? Please go search a bit more about it and come back to me. And then his reaction was no different from any other person I told. Even my, my own best friend, they were laughing at me. And they were saying, I mean, some said, it's too much work to do in one year. And you will never be able to finish it. And others said, you know, you will make a joke out of, you, out of yourself for the whole senior year. But you know what? This didn't stop me. And I, because I was so determined to my dream, as I told you, and I, I, I believed I can make it happen. And then after that, and after that, I recalled this a French, brilliant French architect, Tony Garnier. He had this idea about the future city. He, he has this idea about the future city. And he proposed it when he was a student at a back in architecture school. And this was his idea, housing compound. But you know what happened to him? His idea was completely rejected. And his, and his professor was almost, I mean his professor almost wanted to fail him because of that. Well, you might see nothing wrong with this picture, but in 1890, and in France, sorry, and in France, this style was never existed yet. So it was strange for them to see such an architecture. And then, I, I remember back when I was a sophomore year, I was taking a thermal science with my dear friend. We were doing really bad. I mean, after I saw our grade in the midterm, I grabbed him and we hit to the registration office. And I said, please, Fisher, we need to drop the course now before it's too late. And I remember he told me some words I never forgot. I will never forget. I mean, he said, you know, Hatem, don't dare to be quitter now. Because later on in your life, whenever you face a hard problem, you will always try to find the easy way out. You will always try to quit. But, this is, but in real life, there is nothing called quit. In job, you get fired. And in your family, if, if you start to be lazy, you will get divorced. Or she will tkhlaq. <laughs> so, so, I mean, this gave me the small push I, push I needed to start off the project. So my first question was, what is lunar architecture? I know it is architecture versus astronomy. And since you are an architecture engineering department, I know I must include all the engineering solutions and studies. But as I began to read more and more about it, I figured out, I figured out I'm not even close. There is a lot of scientific areas I need to cover if I want to fully understand life on the moon. 
such as, as I mean, such as sustainability, health and nutrition, psychology, astrology, and a lot more. And here I seriously had a second thought. It's too much work to finish in one year. So what, sh what should I do? I mean, should I quit and search for another idea? The next step was to find the basic guidelines to guide me through my design. So like, I mean, these, these in front of you are the most famous three architects manual here on Earth. Every architect used them to design any kind of building in the entire world. But the info, I mean, they were designed to be here on Earth. But on the moon, the information there was completely useless for me. So, I, I mean, here I thought, okay, this is another wall, and maybe that's, that's the end. And then I went online and searched, and I couldn't find any physical reference for the moon. I was like, okay, I was so desperate, I was so desperate that I found a site called Space Architect Organization. And I went to the contact, and there were like more than 250 professors, and most of them they are working in NASA and ESA. And then, believe me or not, I spent all that night writing emails for each one of them. At the end, I received seven replies, but they were enough for me. They all told me there is no physical reference for the moon yet. Then I thought, okay, why is that? The answer was the, the answer simply was because I'm thinking 50 years, 15 years ahead. We will reach the moon, inshallah, in 2020 or 2022. And at that time, architects will start to design on the moon, and they will need such a manual. But for now, no one thought about it. And then it hit me. I mean, since I'm already thinking for the future, and I'm already, I mean. I started the risk idea. So it's risk anyway. So let me continue it. Then I said, well, what if I were to make the first lunar architect data for the moon? I mean, I will beat all the others and be the first to make it. And this was my new dream. Because at that time, they will, they, the architect they will really need it after 15 years or 20 years from now. So. To start such a book or such a manual, I studied a lot and did a lot of research to understand what are the aspects, what are the aspects which will affect or which will help me to create or on the creation of such a manual. I mean, there is a lot of differences between the moon and earth. What are these references? And these, and these are the most important references between them. Now, let's talk about the gravity. You know, gravity is what holds us to the ground. This is the gravity. If there is no gravity, I would fly and hit my head to the roof. Now, on the moon, you will, I mean, the gravity, uh, the gravity of the moon is one-sixth gravity of the Earth, which means everyone here will be six times lighter on the moon. I mean, ladies, you don't need to worry about the reading of the weight scale anymore. You will always, I mean, the reading will always be below 20. So, this is the, this is the first difference, the gravity. So how this will affect the movement of, of the human body there? The answer will fascinate you. Now, running and stepping on the moon, usually it depends on our toll. So if you are tall enough, you will have a bigger stride. If you're short, you will have baby steps like me, or maybe shorter length. <laughs> but now, once you start joking or looping, this is the interesting part. Because as you can see now, this is the jogging on the moon. Here, on your left, right side, I mean right hand, you will, feel, you will see the jogging on the moon, and here is on Earth. You will be able to jump or to, to jog up to three meters horizontally, I mean forward. So imagine how fast you will be. It will take you a second to finish from, from one class to another. Now, the vertical jump is yet more interesting. I'm sure people, this will blow up your mind. Now, on the moon, due to the low gravity, on Earth you only jump for 30 centimeters. But on the moon, you can jump up to almost two meters. Imagine how this will change the spaces. I mean, maybe this room is not working anymore on the moon. Because if I jump now, as I jumped seconds ago, I will hit my head to the roof. So, this is the fair difference, which is really interesting for me. But now, I will tell you now something that's not related to architecture, but it really fascinated me and captured my heart. You know, the oldest mankind's dream was to fly. Not using balloons, not using airplanes, just to simply fly with wings. Now people, on the moon, it is actually possible. Due to the low gravity, if you just wear wings, you will be able to fly. Now, I only mentioned four of the main hazards, I mean, for me, for the main differences between the moon and Earth. I won't bother you with more technical, but I just wanted, I just wanted you to realize 
How interesting is to live with a low gravity, but yet it's dangerous and it's risky to survive. Our buildings, will, they need to be adjusted a lot. We cannot simply take any building from here and put it on the moon. There will, I mean, these changes which, which need to be done on the buildings, I collect them all and put them in my manual. I call it the lunar dimensions. I, uh, this name taken from Arabic word, al-maqasat al qamariya And I call it the, the zero edition. It's not shown here, zero edition. Well, I call it the zero edition because this is only the beginning. I'm intending to, to publish the first edition where it, will, where, it, where it will be a comprehensive manual that includes not only the physical part but the psychological aspect as well. Because you know the lunar have this isolated life. I mean, I don't know how many people here from the psychology department, but you understand you cannot, you cannot put someone in a closed black room without talk, talking to anyone. Now here, I mean, more than 100 people. But on the moon, there will be a small communities. So this psychological part, I mean, even though this is not the physical architecture, but they need solutions. Now, in my first edition, I included the physical properties of the building, like the roof height, the, the, the staircase, the, the minimum uh, width and length of any space room, bedrooms. And I included, again, because I told you, again, we're an architectural department, I included a structural solutions, which to hold the pressure force and the gravity, the spans. But I mean, at the end, I reached, because, you know, from the first day I heard my father question, I kept thinking, what will happen for sports? I mean, you imagined how high you can jump and how fast you can go. But imagine sport now. Imagine Tikha playing a basketball there. I mean, you can perform a dunk literally from the center of the field. You'll be flying and do that dunk, and no one will stop you. So now, but unfortunately, sports are not physically challenging anymore. So I was thinking, okay, then I need to find a conversion factor to make it difficult for athletes like Tikha to play there. Because why you play sport? To stay fit, you know, and to move our blood. And this is the idea about it, behind, sorry. So I find this conversion factor based on the new human movement, which is like jumping and stepping, as you saw the jogging part. And then I, hence now it's bigger. The basketball is higher, I raise it up to 4 meters, so now we cannot perform a dunk easily. But again, all of this was based on the new human damage, uh, I mean human movement. Even the ball itself, even the ball itself, I thought because now, as I studied, the ball is half a kilo. They test it, like they throw it for 1.5 meter, and it needs to bounce, rebound, sorry, for 1.2. Now on the moon with the low gravity, if you throw it for 1.5, it will rebound till, I don't know, four or five meter. So now it's hard to play basketball there, or any, or, or, or any sport. So I suggested that the size of the ball need to be bigger, the weight of the ball need to be heavier. So now it's easy for them to control it. And we kind of imitate the sport we play here. Now finally, I was done with the book after two years of research, and I finally I feel I belong to the lunar architecture world. I feel I, t I have taken that small step Neil Armstrong talked about when he said, one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Now with this manual, hopefully when I publish the first uh, issue, we will be the f I will be the first one who will give the juice of my research for all my colleagues, I mean architect's colleagues around the world. Now, I applied this manual on my senior project. I won't talk a lot about this, but just I want to show you the layers I included. It's all from the manual itself. The layers for protection, from heat, from meteors, from pressure. I mean, I even included some cables to pull the building itself. I mean, to make it more stiff so it won't explode anymore. And at the end, my most interesting part was, I mean, this is my dream, was to design in this low gravity. So just, I mean, this is the idea I had about the living room. This is your house. It's not horizontal anymore. It's vertical. Because you can jump up to two meters. So, what, 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 I mean, why don't I use that, right? So no stairs. No stairs needed anymore. You will be jumping from one floor to another. So from the kitchen to the gym to the storage to, the, to your bed at the top. And again, you can see there is no walls. I don't know if there is an engineer here. But there is no walls because now it's, they are too light. Because now the structure itself is too light, then only steel cables will be enough for them. 
Well, you remember I told you, I mean, you saw the weird look of my students, uh, my supervisor at the beginning, but then he believed in me. And even my own parents, my father was like, I mean, why are you going to the moon? Can't you, any, can't you do, do something in Qatar? Yeah, you know, the entire world is not enough for you. And my mom was like, can't you design any building like the famous Iraqi architect Zaha Hadid? But you know, that not, I mean, this is their dream. My dream was to be in the moon. But you know, after a while, when I presented my project, I was shocked to see all these people attending my presentation. They were so curious to know what happened. They all believed in my dream the same way I did. I mean, I was really shocked even like my father, he attended there because usually he's not interested in my study, but <laughs> sorry, he's usually not interested in my study, but he's here today. And you know, since that day, since he saw how much I was determined to my idea, now he's, he's the one who's keep pushing me to do better and better. I mean, he's the one who tell me, go do your master and PhD on this topic. Continue your study, don't stop. Now I will take a few seconds here and thank, I mean a special thank for Dr. Hassan, the head of our department. He really, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I mean sorry if I embarrassed you, but he really supported me, I mean maybe he was, was the only doctor who supported me in this idea. Among with my best friends, and again I need to thank them, Wissam and Haider, Yahya, Mira and Reem. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I mean, I, I, I won't be, okay, I won't go very dra dramatic here, but imagine when you have a friend, he tells you, if you didn't finish this project, you never talk to me again. This is Yahya. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks again. Thanks again. <laughs> well, now I have one small request from you. And it's not money, so don't panic. Don't leave. What I want to, to tell you, I mean, I want to tell you dream, because I'm sure everyone here have a dreams, at least one a dream. But it just, maybe you are too scary to do it, or you think it's too hard, or you think, well, no, it's not work, or people will laugh. My advice, my request to you, please be brave and follow your dream. Dream, nothing is impossible. Trust me, no one can stop you, and nothing can stop you, but yourself. It's all here in your head. If you put these walls, and you close in yourself, you will never be, I mean, you will never reach anywhere will be just an ordinary person. And trust me, you will never be happy. Once you have a purpose in life, once you have a goal in life, you will be really motivated and you will always be happy. I mean, see me, I'm always smiling. I can't stop smiling. And the sky is not the limit anymore because I reached beyond the sky. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Hatim Hussein. Have a dream, believe, achieve one of my dreams. It's your chance. Thank you.